श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाति स्वदातिस्वदातिक वंदे हम श्री गुरो श्रीयुत पद कमल श्री गुरून वैष्णवांश श्री रूप साग्र जात सह गण रघुनाता तम सजीव साध्वैत सवधूत परजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पदा सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्ता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांति राधा कांति नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुत देवी प्रणमा हरिप्रिय वंशा कल्पतरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवभ्यो नमो नम नमो विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नाने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे आनंद लीला मय विग्रहाय हेमाबदिव्य छवि सुंदराय तस्म महाप्रेम रस प्रदा चैतन्य चंद्राय नमो नमस्ते हरे कृष्ण एवरी वन सर्टनि मै ऑनर एंड प्रिवलेज टू बी बैक विथ भक्ति संग आफ्टर सम टाइम एस्पेशली आफ्टर कोविड इट्स बीन जूम हेज बिकम क्वाइट अ ग्रेट ऑप्यूलेंस बिकॉज नाउ द प्रोग्राम्स हैव ओपन अप सो devotees are uh, kind of getting used to the program in person so i am very happy to be back to the platform which connected and which continues to connect all of us uh, through the pandemic and even after so i want to express my heartfelt gratitude to kirtida sundari mata ji priti vilasini mata ji and uh, of course padma sakhi mata ji and so many other wonderful vaishnavis uh, for kindly inviting me and having me over for this service thank you all so much also my heartfelt prostrate obeisances to each one of you for kindly participating from different parts of the country and different parts of the world uh, thank you for giving your most invaluable time time is the most uh, uh, invaluable thing in the world so to give one's time is the best gift that one can give anyone to give somebody food clothing shelter education is all great gifts no doubt but to give something that will never come back in your life and to give that uh, to someone is certainly the greatest gift so all of us sitting together we are offering our time energy our hearing speaking faculty and ultimately our hearts to the discussion of chaitanya bhagavat at the lotus feet of shri shashinandan gaurahari shri krishna chaitanya mahaprabhu shri la prabhu pad ki jai so i have been asked to speak on the 10th chapter text 3 4 and 5 of the chaitanya bhagavat so if possible maybe it can be screen shared so other devotees who don't have the verses don't don't have the book they can also get a chance to um, read the verses sure prabhu ji i'll i'll share screen i'll do it sure sure, sure mata ji thank you so chapter 10 of chaitanya bhagavat adi khanda is entitled marriage to shri lakshmi priya text 3 <clears throat> these are all again verses by vyasadev shila vrindavan das thakur so let us read them jay jay jagannath putra ve praraj जय जय जगन्नाथ पुत्र वे प्रराज जय हो तो जत श्री भक्त समाज जय हो तो जत श्री भक्त समाज जय जय कृपा सिंधु कमल लोचना जय जय कृपा सिंधु कमल लोचना हे नो कृपा कर तो यश रहू 
हे न कृपा कर तो यशर आदि खंडे सुनो भाई चैतने कथा आदि खंडे सुनो भाई चैतने कथा विद्या रिलास प्रभु करे न जथा विद्या लास प्रभु करे न ओके सो बैक टू टेक्स्ट थ्री जय जय जगन्नाथ पुत्र विप्रराज जय हो तोर जत श्री भक्त समाज ऑल ग्लोरियस टू जगन्नाथ सन दिस इज जगन्नाथ मिश्र सन श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु द किंग ऑफ द ब्राह्मण all glories to all of your devotees the phrase shri bhakta samaj is explained as follows brajendra nandan shri krishna is the only worshipable lord that supreme lord in his two forms as vishay and ashray the worshipable and the worshipper is the worshipable object of all his subordinates the vishay vigraha or the object of worship who is the lord of the goddess of fortune and the ashray vigraha or abode of worship who is the goddess of fortune are both the objects of service for their devotees so basically shila prabhupad saraswati thakur's unparalleled commentary here he mentions that uh, god splits in two forms like sita and ram lakshmi and narayan radha and krishna so in that way the supreme lord in the form of rama in the form of uh, narayana in the form of krishna is the vishay vigraha he is the object who is to be served hmm? and then mother sita for ram lakshmi for narayan radha for krishna they are called ashray vigraha the personality whose shelter we must take to attain the lotus feet of the lord like you take shelter of radharani to attain the lotus feet of krishna you take shelter of mother sita take shelter of to ultimately attain the service of ram so that is what prabhupad saraswati thakur writes two forms the lord manifests as himself and as the devotee the best among devotees so in this verse first he is being glorified as jagannath putra vipraraj as the lord and then as shri bhakta samaj so vishay vigraha is offered obeisances and then the ashray vigraha to continue our reading the devotee's favorable cultivation of service towards their worshipable object is called bhakti or devotional service the servants of the vishay and ashray are known as bhaktas there are many so collectively they are called bhakta samaj under the categories of the six opulences various spiritual splendors are present in this bhakta samaj that is why the devotees have been described as shri bhakta samaj shri refers to devotion bhakti so offering obeisances to krishna to radharani and all the devotees of radha and krishna who are filled with shri filled with devotion the beauty the opulence of bhakti all the devotees who are under the shelter of the energetic lord's energy try to please their worshipable lord in various ways text 4 jay jay kripa sindhu kamal lochan heno kripa karat aur yashar human all glories to the lotus eyed lord who is the ocean of mercy o lord please bless me that my mind may be absorbed in your glories it's a very wonderful shloka to memorize we all can memorize this verse jaya jaya kripa sindhu kamala lochan heno kripa karotor yashe rahuman that my love my lord yashe in your glory in your fame rahu morman may my mind be absorbed in your glories instead of my own glories conditioned soul means mind is absorbed in their own glories so called glories but here the prayer is my lord may my mind be absorbed in your glories when the living entities highest spiritual propensities are engaged in the service of the lord who's full in six opulences there is no inconvenience for them when a living entity becomes greedy for objects not related to the lord he loses his opulences and being thus disturbed by his restless mind he furthers his conditioned life this is why the author with a desire to be attracted to the lord is hereby praying for his mercy so the take home is as soon as we turn away from krishna 
Krishna Surya Sama, Maya Hai Andhakar. As soon as we turn away from Krishna, there is suffering because Krishna is joy personified. As soon as we turn away from Krishna, there is suffering. And it is a moment to moment thing. We have to have a, a verification every day to see this time to this time. How did I use my time? Either I'm absorbed in Krishna or I wasted my time. These are the only two options. Even academic work is all service to Krishna only. Because if you have very good education, if you have a very good job, it boosts your CV. Then when you preach, it's uh, used very wonderfully. People generally get attracted when we preach in one of the following ways. They either get attracted to the character of the preacher or they get attracted to the competency of the preacher, which means either they get attracted to the character of the preacher, how sincere, how selfless, etc. Or they get attracted to the competency, how talented, how skilled the speaker is or the preacher is. Or they get attracted to the, uh, the personality of the preacher or the presenter. Very pleasing personality, smiling face, sweet uh, words, etc., etc. Or they get attracted to the position. So they get attracted to PPCC. Position, personality, character, competency. These are the four things that generally people in this world get attracted to preachers. They get attracted to character or they get attracted to competency or they get attracted to the personality or they get attracted to the position. Now position means what kind of background the person is coming from. I'm not talking about devotees getting attracted. Generally, some newcomer, someone from the outside world, when they get to know that the presenter of Krishna consciousness comes from a very nice academic background or very wonderful corporate background with a lot of experience, that is the fourth, the position. So they give some importance to that. So students should not think that studying or working a full-time job is maya. Especially if you have to enter the household life, then you need money. And to need money, you need a job. And no one will give a job without academic qualification. So we should, we should pursue our line of thought like that. That I am studying so that I get a good job, so that I have the money, so that I can pay off the bills in a house where I can sit and chant peacefully. If there is no money and you're sitting and chanting Hare Krishna, you don't know how the grocery money is going to come, how the bills will be paid, how the electricity will be paid. Um, if that stress is there, how can we possibly chant? Right? So we are working to make the money to live in a home not to be happy but to live in a home where we can perform bhakti and hence be happy and then if this is the intention then the material pursuit also becomes completely spiritual his holiness mahavishnu goswami maharaj from rajkot would say that we should not be a devotee in the temple and a karmi outside a devotee is a devotee all the time which means even if he's doing a material activity the intention why he is doing it is different from a karmi. Does that make sense? So even if he goes for grocery shopping, let's say he has to get some fruits and vegetables, externally speaking, he's in a shopping mall or he's in a, you know, in a place where he purchases some vegetables. But a normal conditioned soul will, will take vegetables on the basis of, oh, I haven't eaten this in a long time. Let's take this so that we can make a sabji, right? And the devotee thinks, oh, this is a seasonal fruit. I think we should feed Thakurji. We should feed our deities. Krishna will be very happy to eat oranges in summer or mangoes in summer, etc. If you are from Nagpur, then you can have oranges <laughs> in great abundance. And if you are from Ratnagiri, you can have Apus, Alfonso. So anyway, the point is, both are purchasing fruits and vegetables, but the purpose in which they are inspired is completely different. So the point is here, Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur says that if we don't give our mind to Krishna, we will give our mind to Maya and that will cause trouble. That will cause trouble. She promises joy. She promises joy, but ends up whipping us very badly with suffering. We all should tell ourselves one thing. That my eternal joy, my true happiness lies at the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. So the more closer I am to them, the more happier I am. The more farther I am from them, the more suffering I have. 
This we should tell. But at the moment, what we have told ourselves, we have told that my joy and happiness are in the objects of this world. So naturally what happens is the more I get it, the more happier I feel and the more I want it because I feel that's where my happiness is. But if we convince ourselves that my true joy, my happiness is at the lotus feet of the Lord. Even if I don't feel it, that's the truth. That is the truth. And I should pursue that. Those who have walked on that path have attained it. And those who have walked on this path are frustrated. Look at this. Look at the contrast in this world. Those who walk the path of this material world, which promises a lot of joy, they get frustrated. They get into depression. They get into isolation. They get into sleeping pills. And they go through counseling. They go through therapy. Because they are finding, they are actually searching for the true thing, but they're searching for something that's found in the East. They're trying to find it in the West. On the other hand, those who have tried to find happiness on the path of God realization, even if they, are, they appear to be like homeless street beggars in Brindavan, you will see their smile wider than the biggest multimillionaires. Because the multimillionaires are 65 years old and they have maybe $65 million in their bank account, but they still can't quit. They want to make more. The wants are higher. The investments are higher. The stress is higher. The travel is higher. The health is low. <laughs> right? So we're not talking anything against money. Srila Prabhupada used that money so effectively in Krishna's service. Prabhupada came with 40 rupees and in no time had more than 40 crore rupees. So when the biggest businessman came to meet Srila Prabhupada, he said, uh, he offered obeisances. So Prabhupada introduced to his disciples. You know, this person is the biggest <laughs> businessman. So that person, he bowed down and he told, no, no, actually, Swamiji, you are the biggest businessman. You came with 40 rupees and you converted it into 40 crore rupees in no time. So you are a biz bigger businessman. So Prabhupada said, feel free to join my business. <laughs> Give up your business and join my business. So nothing against making money, but we are mainly talking about intention mainly talking about intention. We can see that uh, when Srila Prabhupada used to be received in a Rolls Royce, the reporters used to be amazed and they would say that you're supposed to be guru. How come you're, in the, you're coming in an opulent Rolls Royce? Prabhupada said that I am the eternal servant of God and representing God, I'm coming in the richest country of the world. They should actually give me a car of gold and diamonds. But because they can't afford it, they're giving me the best that they can. <laughs> because Jay and Vijay, if they come, they are not going to come in Rolls Royce. They're going to come in a way more opulent vehicle. So in this way, nothing against opulence. But when we are not matured enough, we get sucked into it. And we are not able to utilize in Krishna's service. So here, Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur says that we should pray to Krishna. That, hey Prabhu, I have bhulu nahi. हे नाथ मैं आपका हूं मेरी मति आपके चरणों में बसी रहे वी शुड प्रे लाइक ओ माय लॉर्ड मे माय माइंड ऑलवेज बी एट योर लोटस फीट मे आई नॉट फॉरगेट यू एंड प्रभु श्रीपाद भक्ति स्वरूप दामोदर महाराज वंस टोल्ड अस इज मेनी इयर्स अगो 20 प्लस इयर्स अगो ही टोल्ड मी एज अ चाइल्ड व्हेन आई वाज अ चाइल्ड ही टोल्ड मी दैट एवरी नाइट बिफोर वी गो टू स्लीप वी शुड मेक एनालिसिस ऑफ हाउ आई यूज्ड माय डे टुडे how many hours I wasted, how many hours I used in Krishna's service. And if we do it daily, we will see that if we pray and we sincerely endeavor, then the time that we utilize for Krishna will increase. Even the academic study, even work, we should try to keep ourselves Krishna conscious. And every 15 to 20 minutes, even between study or even between work, we should say Hare Krishna. That's all. Or maybe the Hare Krishna Mahamantra once. Every 15-20 minutes. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Even when we are studying, every 15 minutes, we should pray. Like after every 15 minutes, you take a 10 second break to chant this Mahamantra once. And you pray to Krishna that my Lord, whatever I have studied in the last 15 minutes, I offer it at your lotus feet. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what work we are doing. We could, let's say, have a shop where we are selling groceries or stationeries. So there also, after every 15 minutes, we should say, we should chant Mahamantra once and we should say, Krishna, 
whoever customers have come and whatever products I've given out, I offer all this profit and all of this at your lotus feet. We may think, oh, but I'm just saying it on the tongue. I don't mean it. We should start from the point where we are. And slowly the tongue will become deep. From Instead of going lip deep, it will become heart deep in no time. Every 15 minutes, if we can do this, can you imagine what great absorption that is? What great absorption. We can be anywhere. Let's say we are at the airport or we are at a bus station or we are at a railway station. And we are, let's say, traveling from one place to another. At the end of 15, 20 minutes, pray to Krishna and say, Krishna, this travel that I have made, I offer this to you. <laughs> it could be anything. Even the intention behind bathing for a devotee is different from a karmi. Karmi doesn't bathe only many times. They just put some body deodorant and they come to work. <laughs> and you can see very clearly, the eyes are sleepy, mouth is stinking. Hmm. And the person is uh, dresses also not proper, but a lot of fragrance coming. <laughs> so you know that he has tried to bathe without water, just by some perfume. So the person, even if he bathes, he just do, does it as a duty. But why does a devotee do? Because he has to go near Krishna, he has to offer obeisances, and you can be unclean. So you clean your body, you go clean your mouth, Actually, Srila Rupa Goswami Pad has said to keep dental hygiene is very important for a devotee. And I was reading the other day, Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur writes that Radharani uses a tongue cleaner. I was amazed when I read that. He said that Radharani uses a tongue cleaner and he also describes it's like a bow. You know, typically how the, the tongue cleaners are. Radharani uses a tongue cleaner, which is like a bow. And he also says she goes one way. So he doesn't just say what she does. He says with what she does it and also the technique of tongue cleaning. <laughs> she doesn't like rub back and forth. She pulls out. Of course, it's just nectar. It's Amrit what drips out of the tongue of Srimati Radharani. It's her prasad. <laughs> so the point is, Rupa Goswami, Chakravartipad, they've all spoken about dental hygiene. So when we are doing tongue cleaning also, what is the meditation? Oh, Chakravarti Pad has written about it. So we clean, you, even when we brush our teeth, we remember, oh, Rupa Goswami Pad has written. Or even when we take a bath, the thing is, we want to take a bath to be clean so that we come close to Krishna, we can light a lamp, we can offer obeisances, we can offer a little arati, and we can sit and chant in the presence of the Lord. Very pleasing, right? So in this way, everything that a devotee does, the mind is always Krishna conscious. Mind is always Krishna conscious, always learning, always learning. Now, two days ago, uh, we had the auspicious uh, association of a very advanced Vaishnava. And we got him, his association only for a few hours, but it was so fulfilling. And I saw personally how his mind was completely absorbed, completely Krishna conscious, very advanced Vaishnava. And he was always remembering his spiritual master for everything. So he, he came to um, sit in a place and we offered him a chair and he sat in the chair and he reclined on the chair and tried to increase the height and decrease the height of the chair. And he said, oh, my Guru Maharaj would really love this chair because it is comfortable to sit on. So I was thinking as soon as he sat, <laughs> he was remembering his Guru Maharaj. It was very, um, very inspiring. And also when... Um, I offered my gratitude and I said that I am very inspired by your decades and decades of service. So immediately he said, oh, I am uh, just moving according to Srila Prabhupada's and my Guru Maharaj's instructions. Said that Srila Prabhupada's movement and my Guru Maharaj's direction. I am simply doing that. So I was thinking that whether it's sitting down on a chair or whether it's glorification on the basis of gratitude, the mind of a Vaishnava is always absorbed. It's always absorbed. Uh, Srila Prabhupada was like that. Even when in the initial days they forgot to bring a Vyasasana for Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada sat on the floor. He said that uh, later when the devotees apologized, Srila Prabhupada said, no, actually Bhumi, this is the lap of Krishna. And being Krishna's child, I got the fortune of sitting on the lap of my father. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada saw that also as Krishna's arrangement. 
even when water used to be offered shila prabhupada would say rasoham apsu kauntaya this is the taste is krishna this taste is krishna like prahlad maharaj prahlad maharaj saw krishna even in a pillar now who worships a pillar you tell me in which temple do you have a pillar worship you have deity worship and deity of narsingha dev we worship but when actual narsingha dev came hiranyakashipu could not recognize but even before narsingha dev came prahlad could recognize in a pillar this is a devotee devotee doesn't mean just change of dress yes change of dress is important but devotee means change of heart change of vision jaisi drishti waisi srishti his vision will change his world always seeing krishna's hand in everything always seeing krishna's hand so very very inspiring to to read and hear and see examples like that in real life when i came to america in uh, 2013 my guru maharaj called me on a video call and um, i landed in boston and then went to new york so my guru maharaj asked me in the middle of that conversation aap new york mein pehle aakar phir boston gaye ki boston mein pehle aakar phir new york gaye i was wondering <laughs> like in my mind i was thinking the what is the purport behind this question like did you come first to boston and then go to new york or did you come first to new york and then you you went to boston i was in boston at that time so i told uh, guru maharaj i came to boston i landed in boston then i went to new york which is a few hours away guru maharaj said very good very good prabhupa ji ne bhi yahi kiya <laughs> said prabhupada also first came at the commonwealth pier in boston and then went to new york so even in the trip of boston or new york where the whole world thinks you know uh, downtown new york city manhattan new york city times square you know the world is thinking about new york but guru maharaj sitting in brindavan was telling me that oh good you came to boston and then went to new york because prabhupada also did that so i was amazed how the mind of a vaishnav vaishnavera kriya mudra vigyan abhujaye it's it's impossible to understand the heart and the mind of a pure vaishnav or an advanced vaishnav because they are constantly thinking of krishna constantly thinking of krishna and they can never forget krishna and his associates this is so beautiful so therefore here prabhupad saraswati thakur says as soon as we forget krishna krishna bhuli jeev se anadi bahirmukh atha eva maya tar diya samsara dukh this is why maya gives dukha because we forget krishna krishna is ananda swarup we should tell ourselves all my joy is with radha and krishna the more i read about them the more i chant about them the more i am in the association of devotees remembering and worshiping the deities and celebrating the festivals like we know this month uh, it's a big bonanza month you know in the next 30 days because we have julan yatra we have balaram purnima we have krishna janmashtami we have radhashtami in the next 30 days from today all these festivals are going to come up so we should feel very inspired to celebrate them and remember krishna that is where our joy is brindavan dham is our home the brajbasis our are our family radha and krishna are our life and soul shri guru is the captain to the ship of this human form and we as the passengers will happily cross over the ocean of suffering this is our peace formula <laughs> we should remember that hum is jagat ke hai nahi hum is jagat ke kabhi nahi the we don't belong to this world and this world doesn't belong to us hum is jagat mein lene nahi aaye hain hum dene aaye hain is jagat mein we didn't come into this world to take because we are the servants of the lord we are the servants of the biggest multi trillionaire why will we come and beg in this world we have come to give in this world thoda abhiman theek hai mithya ahankar galat hai to think that i belong to this world and i am so and so that is wrong but to have the true abhiman that i belong to krishna i belong to the biggest richest multi millionaire i don't need to beg in this world 
I have not come to enjoy this world and have things of this world. We have come to give this world, all of us. We come from Krishna's side to fill this world with joy. We have to taste Krishna Bhakti and share it in this world. Janma Sarthaka Kari, Karapara Upakar. When His Grace Adi Gadadar Prabhu got his Brahmin initiation, His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj gave him an instruction. He said, taste the sweetness of Krishna consciousness and spread it around. Very simple. So that is Janma Sarthaka Kari, Karapara Upakar. We all have to taste Bhakti. Even Mahaprabhu, for this purpose only he came. Prema rasa niryas korite aswadan, ragmar bhakti loke korite pracharan. To taste the mango of bhakti and to share it in this world. Why should we take anything from this world? We belong to Radharani and we belong to Shamsandar. Why will we come and beg in the Maya Nagri of this world? Please tell me the lion cubs, even if they play with dogs for some time, will they ever become a dog? They will never become a dog. The dogs at the end of the day will eat bone. The lion cub will not eat bone, will eat the person filled with bones, which means some animal. right? And even if it dies, it will prefer to die, but it will never eat grass. Why are we saying this example? Because we are lion cubs. Our father is Nashengadev. We are all his children, Baba. We are lion cubs. And we have been living with the dogs of this world, the sense objects of this world for a long time. And we think playing with the puppies of this world, we are also a puppy. But no, we are lion cubs. We would prefer to die, but we'll never eat grass. We will never eat the joy of this world. We will eat the actual stuff because we are lion cubs. And the actual stuff is the joy at the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan. This is our mood. So our mind should as much as possible be um, at the lotus feet of Krishna. My Shiksha Gurudev also when asked, he said, as much as possible, we should try to keep our mind on the spiritual platform. Anything that takes our mind away from Krishna, we should be very vigilant. Very vigilant. Buddhi itni tikshna honi chahiye. Our intelligence should be so, so sharp that if my mind is going somewhere, immediately we should try to get it back. Immediately. One time, I had the fortune of being in the house of His Grace Anand Vrindavan Prabhu. Many of you may know him as the, the Japa machine, <laughs> inspiring hundreds and thousands of devotees to chant Japa quality and quantity regularly with determination, with dedication. <clears throat> so why I'm mentioning this is, there were with me, there were some other friends also and family also. So we were all just in general talking to His Grace Anand Vrindan Prabhu's wife, Tulsi Mataji, their son Raghunath. We were all just talking. And Anand Vrindan Prabhu also came there and it wasn't a completely Krishna conscious talk. We were just talking about college and in general, you know, life <laughs> in Mumbai. So Prabhuji came and he stood there for about five to six seconds, went into his bedroom and got a clicker, counter wrapped on his finger and he came out and his wife said prabhu ji hamesha aise hai agar kahi aaye aur wo topic agar non krishna conscious raha to apne counter mein wo sun rahe hain par chanting chalu rehta hai unka he keeps clicking and he keeps chanting because he doesn't want to waste his time so we want to be like this dear devotees <laughs> as much as possible we should make sure that our mind is krishna conscious in all circumstances in every circumstance hmm. Whether it is happiness or distress, whether it's inside the house, outside the house. For that, we have to pray to Krishna every 15 minutes. Hey Nath, I aapko bhulu nahi. Hey Krishna, hey Prabhu, I aapko bhulu nahi. May I never forget you. May my mind always be at your lotus feet. Even if we just start saying it. And you can say it in your mother tongue. It could be in Telugu, Hindi, English, whatever. Doesn't have to be in Bengali or in Sanskrit. If there are verses in Bengali or Sanskrit offered by our Acharyas, of course, in repeating that, there is more glory because those prayers are spotless. But from our heart, every 15-20 minutes, irrespective of wherever we are, we should keep saying, Hey Mahaprabhu, O Krishna, O Radharani, may I never forget you. Whatever I have done in the last 15 minutes, I offer it at your lotus feet. So we'll be careful 
वी कैन नॉट वेस्ट टाइम ऑन यूट्यूब एंड से जो भी यूट्यूब में मैंने ब्राउजिंग किया मैं आपके चरणों में अर्पित करता हूँ कृष्णा मिल से अरे बाबा वॉट आर यू वॉट आर यू सेव टू बी केयरफुल राइट सो इवन वेन वी आर कटिंग वेजिटेबल्स और स्क्रेपिंग और वॉशिंग सम वेजिटेबल्स इन द किचन every 15 20 minutes krishna this i am doing it only for you i want you to have a very wonderful bhoga so that it becomes prasad and we will taste your remnants so in this way the mind must be absorbed as much as possible even while being in this world even while being in this world please tell me why should we wait for death to come then after that we will have darshan of krishna or we will realize spiritual truths death is a material thing we are spiritual living beings krishna is completely spiritual how come a material thing comes between two spiritual entities cannot come <laughs> what has to be witnessed and kai kar kai kabar bhakt bhi kehte hain ki mrityu ke baad hum golok chale jayenge hame prabhu ka darshan hoga wo darshan mrityu tak kyon rukhe kyon rukhaye hum why should we delay it why not experience and realize krishna's mercy while being in this body <laughs> every day every day krishna's mercy in fact in this text 4 you can see one word that has been used is kripa sindhu krishna is very kind supremely kind ocean of mercy how do we realize that on a practical real life scenario <clears throat> parents give money to their children especially when children go out of home out of town they go to a college outside parents will keep sending money right for education etc for their housing for tuition fees etc if the father gets to know that that son instead of using that money for college education is actually smoking drinking and wasting that money sometimes it is also seen that the father will say you work like a waiter in some hotel or restaurant and you make your own money i am not sending because you're irresponsible this is seen and the father is being you know he doesn't want to waste money because the son has to learn a lesson in the hard way but think about krishna we leave his home and we live in the university campus of this world and the opportunities that he's sending in the form of breath in the form of air around water in the form of bhumi place to sit in the form of body senses parents money home he sending all this so it's like a father sending money for his son and the son has been misusing that money for lifetimes and the father still continues to send what is this this is kripa sindhu krishna knows we are using his property against him people take everything from krishna and they are convinced they fight debates that god doesn't exist it is like a son who gets paid who gets money from his father every week here our father is sending every second every breath and he is using that to say that i am an orphan i have no father imagine how the father will feel and chip chip karna hi khul khul kar bol raha hai the atheist will say loudly and what does krishna do he still continues to give unending love krishna thinks the son doesn't understand but the father ami vidnya e murkhe bishay kena dibo he is murkha but i am vidnya i will understand no problem i will continue to love him how much krishna loves us balasya neha pitaro pralad maharaj tells nishinga dev that o oh, nishinga dev you show your love to us in this world through our parents it is your love for us that they transmit that they carry so this is one very important lesson dear devotees whoever gives whatever to us in our life we should tell ourselves krishna is sending it for me because conditioned souls cannot give anything one beggar cannot give alms to another beggar <laughs> in condition in material world everybody is a beggar everybody is begging for joy ye inse bhik mang rahe wo unse bhik mang rahe ye inse bhik mang rahe mujhe thoda anand pradan karo mujhe thoda sukh ki anubhuti karao 
everybody is begging for joy how can somebody give something to <laughs> how can one beggar give some alms to another beggar only rich man can give only rich man so whatever pleasure we get whether somebody comes and gives us two rotis with ghee on the top we thank you we say thank you to that prabhu ji or mata ji but in our heart we understand we thank them for being instruments mediums for carrying those rotis from krishna to us radha and krishna inspired that devotee to make those rotis and inspired that prabhu ji to make the money by which he can buy the rice and the sabji etc etc and the mata ji made it she got the intelligence in the heart and the ability through krishna the hands are rolling in the roti pin and at the same time the ideas of what sabji to make what is the cooking time for which sabji what to add when krishna is giving the ability and the knowledge and the prabhu ji is bringing in the money and put together they developed a desire to feed us so it is krishna alone who through different living beings is showing his love for us how much love he has how merciful acha if you are still not convinced <laughs> let's go further according to shastra it is described all our senses that we have the eyes the ears the throat the mind etc everything including private parts each sense of our body is predominated upon by demigods krishna has assigned demigods to take care of our senses he told chandra inki mati banaye rakhna ye bhakt ko main ye sharir de raha hu inka man kabhi yahan wahan vichlit ho sakta hai he chandra dev aap inki man man ko mati ko banaye rakhna o oh, uh, moon god please take care of this person's mind the mind may get distracted so this condition so i have given this body please make sure his mind is in the right place o oh, surya dev please make sure that this living entity has good eyesight so that he can glance at the devotees he can glance and read shastra krishna has not given this work to some uh, anghuta chap you know from some village ki aao aap iske netra ko dekho inki karno ko dekha nahi so much personal love that krishna has put demigods in in the service of taking care of our senses each one of us surya dev is in charge of our eyesight agni dev is in charge of our throat in this way indra chandra brahma everybody is in charge of different parts of our body now krishna gives us long life krishna gives us human body krishna gives us parents krishna gives us health krishna gives us medicines krishna gives us education krishna gives us demigods in the form of senses krishna gives us opportunity krishna gives us family krishna gives us breath <laughs> imagine how we would look without our eyebrows every detail perfect krishna has placed eyebrows eyelids eyelashes eyeballs every detail perfect apart from all this krishna brings in material sciences like chemical engineering software engineering mechanical engineering so that hamari roti chalti rahe roti kapda makan whatever our material pursuits they will be fulfilled krishna comes as material sciences krishna is the one who arranges jobs krishna gives us different abilities and talents so that we can make our living please tell me a criminal in this world who is jailed is not cared for as much as krishna cares for us while being in the prison of this world now if you think that's all krishna gives well it doesn't end there after doing all this krishna things what if all these demigods fail so he himself sits as super soul in the heart of every living entity <laughs> jaya jaya kripa sindhu kamala lochan this is krishna's karuna how much he loves us there is nobody who loves us like krishna loves us can anybody give us breath in this world can anybody give us a human form nobody can give anything even 1% close to what krishna gives us 
every second, lifetime after lifetime, even when we disobey him. <laughs> he sits as super soul. Now you may think that's all. That's all that he does. Well, now if we still don't understand, then he himself comes in this world. That is Janmashtami. He himself comes. And he doesn't just come as himself. He comes in so many incarnations. Because somebody may say, I don't like Krishna. I like Ram. Somebody may say, I don't like Ram and Krishna. I like Nushinga. So different living entities, different intentions, different desires. The Lord comes in different forms to embrace all of them. And then gives transcendental knowledge. Maya Mukda Jeeva Nahi Krishna Swata Gyan. A living entity, Maya Mukda Jeeva, doesn't know Krishna Tattva Gyan. So Krishna himself comes in the form of the Vedas. And you will see, he comes and gives so much Harikatha. Krishna himself. He comes and speaks to Arjuna in the form of Bhagavad Gita. Comes and speaks to Uddhava in the form of Uddhav Gita. Comes as Hamsa Avatar and gives instruction. Comes as Kapila Muni and gives instructions to his mother Devahuti. Comes as Rishabdev Maharaj and gives instructions to his hundred sons. Comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and gives instructions to Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, Prakashananda Saraswati, Ramananda Rai. Krishna is giving so much. And if we still don't learn, he himself takes a form and comes as Guru to take our attention and mind back to his lotus feet. So amazing, right? How amazing this is. And then he gives us devotee association. He gives us temples. He gives us deities, home deities, temple deities. He gives us books. He gives us classes. He gives us kirtans. He comes as the holy name. He comes as bhajans. He comes as Vaishnava acharyas. He comes as Tulsi. He comes as Ekadashi. He comes as Vrindavan Dham. He comes as sacred rivers. Kya nahi karte Thakur ji hamare liye? What is, where is the point where Krishna fails? In his affection for us. Only if the living entity can understand how much love Krishna has for us. Bhajan karna nahi padega, swabhavik chalega. How can you not remember a person who loves you so much? We don't remember Krishna because we are not convinced he has any affection for us. We feel he has no affection for us. But when we are convinced about how much love Krishna showers on us, then naturally our heart goes there. We all melt in affection thinking of people who love us. Is it not? Naturally, why do people cry <clears throat> when they lose a near, near and dear one? They say, oh, when I was 11, this uncle took me to the cycle and took me to the cycle. He did a lot of things for me. You see, always hear what people talk. They will always cry in gratitude thinking of how much that person has done for them. Somebody loses their mother, they will say, Ma bichari, bohot, khud ke liye roti ho na ho, hamar liye to karti thi. Ham char bachche hote the. You know, you can hear a typical village story from someone. They will say, ki bachpan mein ham char bachche hote the, light nahi hota tha, aur maa parishram karti thi bichari. Ek ghanta bhi sone ka samay nahi. Roti banati thi sab ke liye, aur phir thak kar baiti thi, to aadhi roti kha kar phir kaiti thi, haan sab thik hai, mera peed bhar gaya. Maa ne bohot kuch kiya mere liye. People talk like this. Our heart melts in compassion and in gratitude and appreciation for people who do things for us. Now, all the things that people have done for us in all our lives, they are simply mediums of what Krishna gives us. Krishna is the only one who loves us. Only person. And through different, different mediums, he gives us that affection. The male man, the postman could be different. The message coming is coming from the same source. What we do is we fall in love with people who do things for us. It's like we receive the letter and we think the postman or the male boy is giving it to us. And we fall in love with the male boy or the postman of this world. I hope everyone's understanding the metaphor of people in this world. And we forget who has actually sent it. It's Krishna who has sent it, dear devotees. This is how compassionately merciful he is. Very, very kind, very loving. Think about how many fruits he has created. Different colors, different shape, different sizes, different tastes. Some like, like kiwi, for example. It's brown outside. 
but it's green inside with black seeds. Why Krishna has made all this? If material world is a place of suffering, he should just punish us left, right, center. But fortunate thing is he doesn't think like us. His heart is very big. Rasika Shekhara Krishna Paramakarun. Paramakarun. There is no limit to how much love Krishna has for us. In Braj Bhasha, they say, Avogun kare samudrasam, ganatna apno jan, rai ke sam bhajan ko manat meru saman. This is the love of the Supreme Lord. One can commit mistakes as much as an ocean. Krishna does not even see a drop. And if someone does bhajan like a mustard seed, Krishna sees that as Mount Meru. Look how much he has served me. This is why he says, Swalpam apyasya dharmasya trayate mahato bhayat. Dear devotees, Bhagavad Gita is the song of love. Krishna is speaking for our benefit. Sacha me priya, sacha me priya, sacha devotee is very dear to me. Never think spiritual life is very difficult. Ye karna hai, ye karna hai, ye karna hai. Bas ek cheez karna hai. Only one thing. Tell Krishna mujhse ho ni ra aap sambhaliye. Main aapka hoon. I belong to you, my Lord. I know even if I miserably fail, I know even if I'm not a devotee, I know even if I was not a human being and I was in some lower species, you still love me. Krishna, there is nothing I can do to stop you loving me. <laughs> there is nothing the living entity can do. Kitna bhi papi, kitna bhi durachari, api chet su duracharo bhajate maam ananya bhaag, sadhureva samantavya samyag vyavasito hisaha, kshipram bhavati dharmatma, shashwa chantim nigachati, kaunte ya pratijani hi name bhakta pranashati. Kya hai ye? Ye to prabhu ki karuna hai. This is the Lord's love. Somebody who is durachari, Krishna says su durachar, somebody who is completely out of dharma, if he leaves it and comes to me, I will take care of him. And O oh Arjuna, loudly proclaim, my devotees never perish. So Arjun may say, you announce, why are you telling me to announce? You say, you don't have to do your bhakti. Why do you say that? It can happen. So Krishna says, if I say that my devotees never perish, people will say, today you are saying, tomorrow you break your own promise. But if Arjuna says, who is your dear devotee, you will never break the promise of your devotees. Therefore, O Arjuna, you declare boldly that my devotee never perishes. This is the mercy that Krishna has for a living entity. Imagine in a, in a shop, let's say you, you are the owner of a shop and you recruit somebody to be a servant, a help in that store. Now, imagine if that person sits on your chair and instead of helping and serving the shop, he tells us, Imagine what the shop owner will feel. What do you think he will do? Immediately, in the first sentence, he will say, Chalo, get up. What do you think you are? I am the boss, you are the servant. Right? Look what Krishna does. He owns the store of this world. And we are recruited as his servants. But we sit on his chair as the enjoyer. And we tell God, give me this, give me that. You know, you do this, you do that for me. And what does Krishna do? Does he ever tell? Get up. Leave. Leave the store. Never. Krishna is giving full salary. In fact, Krishna is hiding. He is not even coming in front of us. Krishna could have just come, barged in through the window and say, you know, you're supposed to be my servant. That's why you're created. You're trying to instruct me what, what you want, what I should do. Krishna is hiding. He's not even giving darshan in the sense that if I go, maybe the living entity may, you know, he may not like it because maybe he thinks I'm micromanaging. So distance, theek hai. I'll keep a distance and I'll observe. Maybe tomorrow he will change. Maybe his heart will change tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, karte, karte, karodo, janam beat gay. Millions and millions of births are gone. Krishna still continues to have hope that the living entity will turn towards me. Dear devotees, Krishna on Janmashtami takes janma. Krishna takes birth in this world only so that you and I stop taking birth in this world. Krishna comes in this world only so that we stop coming in this world. This is Kripa Sindhu. 
So how can our mind not be attached to the lotus feet of such a merciful, kind Lord? Right? Imagine if you have a, if, if you have, let's say a band, you see music band, many, many students, especially in their college, everybody thinks they're going to become A.R. Rahman <laughs> in the college days. Everybody has their music band. Whether they know music or no, they will try to give a very musical name to the band. Only when you hear the music, you know, you know how much of a A.R. Rahman they are. But anyway, so the person who leads the band, he may have a drum player, he may have a guitarist, he may have a flutist, he may have a vocal singer, right? So there's a, there's a band leader and then he has different instruments. So what is the purpose of the band? He will lead and he will say at this point, the flute will play at this point, the violin will play at this point, the drums must play. And then the song goes out. Good. Imagine all of them are playing the way they want. What happens to the leader of the band? You think he's going to be very interested in this band? He will say, you know, forget it. This band is my band. You better work the way I want all of you to work or else I just dismiss this, this band. Or if there's a WhatsApp group, I'll just leave the group, you know, like people do. <laughs> they just leave the group. <laughs> so imagine Krishna, he's the leader of the band. And we are all his servants and we are all supposed to play some instrument in his service. But all of us are playing instruments continuously according to our own desire. 7 billion human population, everybody's everybody playing their own music in their own way. And Krishna as the band leader, he's saying, no problem. We'll try once more. We'll all try once more. We'll all try once more. So much so that he comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, holds hands and teaches how to sing and dance together. He himself does it. And that description is Chaitanya Bhagavat. So at this point, <laughs> Brindavandas Thakur, he's praying, Heno Kripa Karator Yashe Rahuman. That may my mind always be at your lotus feet, thinking of Jaya Jaya Kripa Sindhu Kamala Lochan. Heno Kripa Karator Yashe Rahuman. Thinking of how much an ocean of compassion you are, my Lord, in the inside, and how beautiful you are on the outside as Kamala Lochan. May my mind always think of these three facets Krishna's external beauty. And Krishna's internal beauty. Baraha pedam natavara bapuhu karana yoho karani karam externally and internally aho bakiyam stana kala kutam. Even when Putana came, your heart melted for her. My Guru Maharaj explains that the mistakes that we make, they are like fire sparks, and Krishna's heart is an ocean. Is there any point when you can throw fire sparks into the ocean and the ocean will catch fire? Never. How much ever fire you throw into the ocean, the ocean can absorb all of that. Which means we, with all our mistakes of the past, I am not encouraging that we continue to make mistakes. But the point is, there is no point where we become disqualified. Aisa kuch bhi nahi hai, jo hum karenge aur prabhu bolenge, ab kripa nahi milegi. Jagai aur madhai ka udhar hua. Vishya ka udhar Haridas Thakur ne kiya. Gopal Chappal ka udhar hua. Sab, sabse bade Vaishnav aparadiyon ka bhi udhar hua. So we just have to make sure that we follow the principles properly and we as much as possible sincerely offer all our services to Krishna. If we are performing spiritual services like Kirtan, like Katha, like making garlands, like cooking, etc. Before the service starts, we should pray to Krishna. Whatever I am about to do, my Lord, may I offer it to you with all intention for your pleasure. And as we are performing, we should pray in the middle. And after the service is done, we should pray that, um, my Lord, Pratigya Tava Govinda Name Bhakta Pranashyati Iti Samsmritya Samsmritya Pranan Sandharayam Yaham. That, my Lord, I may have committed Aparad Sahasrani Kriyante Aharnisham Maya Dasoham Iti Mamatva Kshamasva Madhusudan. I may have committed thousands and thousands of mistakes. Please kindly forgive me. I only hold hope that you will accept me with all my disqualifications. The child can be filled with so much stool and urine. If he or she, the baby goes and sits next to the mother, the mother loves the child so much that neglects the stool and urine and personally cleans it up. So Krishna's love for the soul is so much 
that doesn't see any qualification, disqualification, eligibility, ineligibility of the body. Krishna personally cleans up the heart. Dhunoti sarvam riddhi sannivishta. Krishna personally, he nashta prayeshu abhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki. Shunvatam svakatha krishna punya shravana kirtana ridayantastha abhadrani vidhunoti suhritsatam. Krishna personally cleans the consciousness of the devotee. But what we should do? Be as Krishna conscious as possible. Keep our mind on the spiritual plane. Think of Krishna in gratitude. Whatever we receive in this world from whomever, we should understand we are receiving it from Krishna only. Sanatan Goswami advised Mahaprabhu, don't go to Vrindavan with thousands and thousands of people. Mahaprabhu did not tell him, I am Sanyasi. Uh, I am the Supreme Lord. I am Brahman. And you are advising me. I am Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan and I am going to Vrindavan and I need your permission. He didn't speak like this. What does Mahaprabhu say? Sanatana Mukhe Krishna Amake Shikhaila. Krishna is teaching me through the lips of Sanatan. So like that we should, whatever we receive in this world, whether it's advice from others, whether it's roti, whether it's a dhoti, <laughs> whether it is any gift or any kind words, any affection, anybody giving any so, sort of encouragement, we should tell ourselves it is Krishna who's giving, making all of them as instruments. And finally, every 15 minutes, we should say, Oh Krishna, hey Nath, hey Prabhu, I have to nahi. Whatever I am doing, I am offering it at your lotus feet. So in this way, if we remember Krishna, then we will make rapid spiritual advancement. We will be in this world, but not of this world. Thank you very much. Vansha kalpatru bhyas chakrapa sindhu bhya evacha patitanam pavanibhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha. Shila Prabhupada ki.